Trudy, are you ready? I'm ready, Evo. Let's do it. Excellent. Well, good evening once again. It's nine o'clock in Nova Scotia, 9 p.m. And uh, well, we're still hustling as it is. Now, this is episode number five of my series, Lessons from Leaders. Today, I have my guest, a financial specialist, Trudy, who's going to come shine some light on home ownership and getting a house in Canada, especially for newcomers. Trudy, welcome. Thank you so much, Imo. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Excellent. Now, Trudy, I always start with this tradition in my uh, series where I ask the guest, how did we meet? So I'm going to pose that question to you. How did we meet? Hmm. So from what I recall, and you can confirm it or deny it, it was uh, 2020, I think it was February, um, International Women's Day. Yes, that was in, at the uh, at the hotel by the waterfront in Halifax, correct? That's right. That's right, it was. Yes, uh, that was one of my uh, uh, fun um, speaking engagements because I was one of the few men who were allowed into the building. So <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's so true, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So um, just before we go in anyway, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and then we'll dive into the uh, topic of the day. Absolutely. Um, so I hail from the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago to be exact. Um, I left home 20 plus years now, traveled a couple of different places and settled in Canada in 2011. Um, I studied accounting. Um, finance. Um, I have a master's degree in that as well. And um, I just decided probably about four or five years ago that I wanted to expand what I do. Um, rather than working for people with the big bucks, I wanted to be able to see what I can do for um, people like me, you know, people who are looking, uh, you know, getting a home, being able to make ends meet and, uh, you know, see about their family. And uh, as a result of that, I kind of fell into the mortgage brokering aspect of it um, and also added to it with um, being able to help folks decide how to manage their finances, whether it be budgeting, um, you know, investing money, um, making sure that their protection with life insurance. So all of those kind of came together and um, hence why I... I refer to myself as a financial specialist. So it's not just one thing, but I try to look at a, you know, holistic view of everything. Excellent. One thing I know that affects all of us, especially people coming in, is, you know, the changing environment now with the high interest rates and inflation and all of that. Mm -hmm. And so I know I have a lot of um, newcomers come in here and ask questions about home ownership. Mm -hmm. So... I guess today maybe what we can do is delve into that and maybe you help answer some questions I have that would help newcomers or new home buyers anyway yes. to find a home that they could move into. So I'm just going to run through a bunch of questions here and then you can share some insights from your experience. Sure. So let's, let's start. Let's go. So can you share some common challenges that newcomers would have coming into Canada trying to find a home? Um, absolutely, because I've uh, gone through them myself as well. <laughs> so one of the, the major points, and I was actually, you know, going through this with my husband as well earlier, was establishing credit. Um, not many countries uh, use credit or credit scoring or, you know, credit history or anything like that. So um, this was a big change for us as well. So while when we move, for my you know using myself as an example when we moved across here we were thinking we could purchase a home you know within three months of, of moving here we came across with a you know a down payment and we were ready to go then to find out that hey you don't have any credit so what was happening is that we were using our debit cards to pay everything and um, not realizing the impact of not using the credit cards was happening for your history that's right that's right so um once we had met um, with the the broker, then we decided, okay, we have to change our strategy. So we each got our credit card set up and we just started to use it. We used it for everything. So paying for gas, paying, paying for groceries, everything. But keeping in mind that um, once we only use what we had, right? right. So 
we make sure that we pay that off, um, you know, at the end of the month, twice a month, that kind of thing to make sure that things kept on track. But as a result, we built our credit that way. Um, you can build credit different ways as well. This could be, you know, taking a loan for a car, um, you know, line of credit, all those kind of things that, that can work. But I think the credit cards is the easiest way, quickest way to get that done. Yeah. So that was a major thing for newcomers. Make sure that you're working on building your credit because that can help you definitely in the future for purchasing a home and other stuff. So I guess that rolls in nicely into the second question, which is what other steps other than the credit card can newcomers use to build a solid financial foundation in Canada? Absolutely. So besides a credit card, um, the line of credit is is pretty effective. Um, the good thing about that is that uh, you only pay interest on what you use at that point. Um, and that's a personal line of credit. Um, what what uh, you know what you should keep in mind though is again make sure that you're using what you have or you know that you will have so you don't put yourself in debt because then that can have a negative effect on you know you're trying to get established in, in Canada if you leave something sitting in debt for too long it has the reverse impact for you um the, the other thing that they should look at too is um trying to establish some saving accounts um, and I think we'll go into that a little bit later. But uh, besides, you know, spending the money and everything you get, make sure that you're paying yourself first. Save some money on the side and you could save for different reasons as well. All right. Um, I would say... What kind, of, uh, what kind of reasons? You said save for different reasons. Could you just give some... For different reasons. Well, yep, yeah, I could get into that now. So you can have savings for emergency. So this is where, you know, something happens um, where you probably have to go home. Something has happened to a family member at home and you have to be able to rush home to get that. Rather than putting that on a credit card, make sure you have money saved up on the side for that so that you can easily pay that off pretty quickly. So that's an emergency fund. Um, the next level is where you have a specific plan, probably a vacation. Right. Probably you're getting married. Probably you want to save for a down payment for a home. So it's a uh, savings with a purpose. So you are working towards saving for this period because you know what? You have a goal. That's the second type of savings. And the last type is uh, the long-term savings. This is retirement savings. Um, I would even lump in um, saving for your kid's education because even though it has a goal, it is more long-term as well if you start early for your kids. True. So making sure that you keep those three things in mind, I would even encourage having three different types of accounts to save those in because they have different purposes too. Okay, good point. Yeah. Now, now that you're talking about savings, I guess that ties into the Canadian banking system. I know for yes. people who come in here, it's new because it's different from how banking was done back home. So That's what right. um, what things should they be aware of in regards to the Canadian uh banking system yeah so i mean you have your your day-to-day -day savings um definitely um opening a bank account just for that is is absolutely you know important so you know you have an account that you set up for your salary to pass through make sure you have that set up because uh, honestly you can't do it without without having that set up um but again with most banks the interest rates that you're getting on savings accounts are it's not great yeah it's so like point zero something it's, Exactly. Yeah. So start to look outside of that. Besides banks, we have a lot of wealth management companies um, that you can start up with. Years ago, probably 20, 40 years ago, wealth management companies seemed to be for folks who had money. Right. Um, but now, you know, these companies are opening up to folks, um, middle class, lower class, where you can put some money and get some decent returns um, as opposed to the 0.5 or 2% that you can get at, at the banks. So being able to, to you know, access those kind of um, institutions can definitely make a difference on your, on your savings account. Right. Yeah. So Trudy, uh, I guess this will tie into um, that. And uh, maybe you, you would figure out what order you want to answer that in terms of um, what supporting networks are out there for newcomers to uh, tap into. And I'm also going to tie it into when you're trying to buy a house. You can answer this in whatever order you want. 
uh, mm -hmm. make it flow whichever way you want. But you know, it's what kind of support do they have out there? And then also now moving from that into trying to get their first home, the things that they should be looking out for, or the things they should be doing to make sure they put themselves in a position, yes. uh, in a better position to buy. Absolutely, that's a great question, uh, Emo. So um, I think you know, let's start off with uh, the networks that are out there. Um, there are a lot of folks who have Facebook networks that they join up for, you know, friends or, you know, acquaintances that have gone through the process. Don't try to learn everything on your own and start afresh, you know, reach out and, and talk to folks about it. Um, do your own research. Um, that being said, you know, make sure that the source is good. That's, that's sure. so important, right? Um, I've found that uh, the government has established some great government um, specialized websites to provide information for newcomers. Um, they they talk about getting a job, you know, understanding the banking system, all of these. And, and you know what? I can share the link so that you can, you know, include it for the folks looking at uh, at the podcast later. These things, um, you know, are wholesome that they can use and rely on the information knowing that it's you know it's good and the source is good too um some banks also do provide some you know additional details that uh you know if you want to find out more about the banking institution you can reach out to them and you can get that information as well so there are many resources but if anything talk to people that you know that have gone through the process so that you can verify your your you know your sources before you fully get into it with anything that sounds fair enough mm -hmm. now um newcomers well it's funny it's a new place it's cold well it's warm <laughs> in the summer so many new yeah. things you know uh different language different way of doing business but i know that newcomers come in and there are a bunch of obstacles that hit them first of all they don't have work history here they don't have credit history yeah yet. Um, yes. can you address how they should uh tackle that yeah um, so as I mentioned at the beginning, getting the credit card, really important. Um, make sure that you're building that credit that way. Um, something I wanted to touch on in the start is um, I've found that a lot of folks hold off on buying a car. That is important. If you're buying a car and you have to finance it and you want to also buy a home, I would recommend recommend buying the home first and then buying the car after. What happens is the uh, the loan that you have to take out to purchase the car has a huge impact as to how much home you can afford as well. Wow. Okay? So it, it lowers the pur your purchasing power, essentially. Um, so, so that's why, while we need to build our credit, so that's why we're taking out loans and so forth, you have to manage it very well. So using the simplest form of using credit cards, Ideally, you find lenders are looking for two um, two lines of credit, two trade lines of credit. So if you have two credit cards, perfect. You know, each spouse has two credit cards, that's perfect. When you start to go into a car loan and so forth, the impact that it has on your being able to purchase a home, you will see the difference. Sometimes it could be a twenty dollars to $50,000 difference, depending on how much you're paying for that car per month. Okay. Now, is the, is the amount for the car, is it dollar for dollar? Is that how it's assessed? It, uh, it is not necessarily that. It, it depends on how much you're spending per month. So, you know, somebody who's spending probably $200 a month, um, probably about ten to 15000 If you start going up seven, eight, eight hundred dollars $800 a month, yeah, that, that's uh, like 50 60 70 It could have that, that kind of impact on your purchasing power. Um, if... In coming over to the country, you can buy a car cash. Great. That means you'll have no impact on, on you know, being able to finance a home later on. Um, but I know not everyone can do it. All right. right? So so that's that's something to, to consider. Um, so if anything, see if you can live somewhere or rent somewhere that has, you know, transportation that's easier for you to get, get around on uh, until you're able to... If, if buying a home is uh, that important to you and you want to be able to do that first, that's why I would recommend holding off and buying a car first and then doing that later. Um, it, it's, uh, it makes a big difference. And the reason for that too is that when you purchase a car, what lenders look at then is totally different from what they look at for a house. 
So it doesn't have the same impact if you do it in that order. So it, it's uh, definitely recommended. Now, uh, just to touch on that a little bit. Um, okay, so if somebody pays cash for the car, mm -hmm. which means suddenly now there are less that amount of money that was paid for the cash. Now, doesn't that play into their debt? Uh, what's it called? Uh, debt to income ratio, debt to cash ratio? ratio? Yes, yes, because they do look at the your assets as well, what you have in your asset. But again, you look at your, they do measure your car as an asset. So okay. in that way, the lender will see, okay, you don't have cash, you know, liquid cash, but you do have a car. That's, that's right. fine. But again, you're right. You do have to manage that, you know, you know, spending the money on a car versus having the cash for a down payment. So it is, it is a toss up and just being able to plan it, <laughs> plan it correctly. And uh, hence why, you know, talking to someone who has done it before and um, trying to figure out do I really need that expensive car right now? I could probably get, you know, the car I really want after I get my home, that kind of thing. Just get yeah. something that gets you from A to B, you know. And when you get the house, then you could do that after. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Now, are there any government programs that are targeted towards um, newcomers? Now, I know there are some to just new home buyers, but are there anything specific to newcomers? Well, most lenders they have a um, new to Canada program. Um, okay. So so what this allows is um, depending on you know the history that you have, um, you can get into a home. Some people get into a home three to six months of arriving into Canada, but it does have different impacts. Um, you'd find that I think the sweet spot is when you've just crossed a year, so you have a credit history per year that's ide ideal, um, then you could fall into the new to Canada program. Um, and, and with that, you can, you know, be set up where you just have to put 5% down at that point in time. Um, they're looking for two trade lines, as I said, so they want to see two credit cards and, you know, it should have a minimum balance of about 2,500 in, you know, in total. And with, with that happening, um, you normally meet the requirements of what a lender is looking for as a, someone who's new to Canada. So it's not necessarily that they are going to provide, um, you know, the support for a down payment just yet, but at least you're in a position that they could fall into that category and they're not looking for a long history of employment or anything like that because they're aware that you just started. If you are here for a year, and you're in Nova Scotia province, there is a program called Nova Scotia Down Payment Program. But again, you have to be in the province for one year and uh, your income has to fall in a certain level. It's uh, under 145,000 for household income. Um, and once you fall into that and your credit score is just at the right point and you've been pre-approved by a lender, you can get support from the government for your down payment. Um, they will uh, help you with 5%. That's okay. the maximum they'll do. And they, Purchase price has to be um, below five hundred thousand to be able to qualify for that. Okay. But it is an absolute great uh, program that uh, the Nova Scotia province has. Please. Right. Now, just to back up a little bit, you talked about uh, twenty five hundred. Uh, was it limit on credit cards? Is it total on all the two cards each person has, or could you just clarify that a little bit? Yes, for sure. So what, what lenders would like to see is that you at least have some credit established. And between the two trade lines that you have, say you have something from, and not that I'm you know sponsoring any, any banks here or anything like that. So you have a credit card from um, RBC and one from Scotia. Both your credit, if you total the credit limits, it can, uh, the minimum is 2,500. Per person. Uh, per person. That's right. That's good. Per person. Okay. Yeah. Now we'll go to the uh, part of misconceptions in the home buying process. Anything that jumped to mind that newcomers should be aware of? Yeah. Um, I think one thing a lot of folks think is, uh, you know, because you're new to Canada, suddenly the rules don't apply to you and that you have to put 20% down. That's not true. Um, as long as you have all the requirements, you can fall into the 5% rule. Um, what I found is if you have less than uh, one year in Canada, they normally will look for 10% at 
at least, because you don't have that credit established. Once you cross that year mark, you can de definitely do the 5%. So that is, it's available to, to everyone. Um, something to keep in mind too, is um, that while you're on a work permit too, you can qualify um, as a home buyer. If you're here for you know two, a, a year or two and uh, you are on a work permit um, and you've established your credit history, you can qualify for a home that way and put 5% down. Um, it was at the beginning of uh, 2023, um where you know certain restrictions were put in where if um if you want a work permit you weren't allowed to to be able to um uh, purchase a home just yet so it uh it caused a lot of uh noise <laughs> in wow. in you know the the home purchasing world but um i think that the government eventually saw yeah this can't work and they did relax that um coming down to the middle of uh, 2023 so again folks who were on work permit with the plan to eventually become uh, you know permanent residents yeah they were able to purchase a home as well so um whether on work permit uh pr definitely you can purchase a home in canada okay now do um newcomers have any interest rate um relief or th interest points added on to to what they get because they're living here for maybe a year or less than a year or is this just nope. the same as everybody else just the same as everyone else as well and you're right that is a misconception as well um if i'm speaking to someone who is new to canada or who's been here seven eight or who is a citizen it's the same interest rate okay. um what differs with the interest rate is the purpose of your loan that's that's the main reason and your credit score, I imagine. And your credit score in some cases, yes. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, maybe as we're wrapping this up, maybe you could expand a little bit on credit score and interest rates as mm -hmm. best as you can. Like what's the, what's the relation? Um, so ideally you want to have 680 and up. Um, 680 is considered to be a good score. OK, so when a lender is looking and they say, oh, 680 or 730 or 800, I've seen some 800s. This is great. Um, then you're you're a great um, person. And, and what that is telling them is that this person, there is a high ratio that if I lend you money, you're going to pay me every month and I will not have a problem with you. OK, mm -hmm. so so that, that's that's uh, that's how they measure it. Um, when it starts to go below 680, some lenders will go up to 650 minimum. So um, you know, they consider if, if both um, parties have a 650 score, they may make an exception. If one has 680 and one has 630, they may make an exception as well. If you're partnering right. as well, I like that. There is a lender or two that they will go up to 600 as well. But if they go up to 600, everything else has to be great, okay? It may be that something happened that they score dipped for 600. I have to be able to explain why we have to talk right. about it and see that, you know, this was just something that happened in the past and you're working the way up to, to get this right, okay? So with those kind of scores, the, um, the credit, um, sorry, your interest rates are going to be basically the same that you'll be offered. Uh, at that point okay. in time. Um, what will differ though, Emo, is um, how much you can borrow, okay? So if you are below 650, um, there are certain ratios that we use and we have to calculate um, to just to see if you can qualify. Um, normally, if you're 680 and up, you're looking at 39% uh, of your income can be used towards going towards a mortgage. Um, and when I say your mortgage, that means your mortgage payment, your monthly mortgage payment, your property tax payment, and also heating costs. Because we're in Canada, we need heat. So that's why those three things are included. So they look at if you have a score of uh, 680 and up, they will allow you to go up to 39% of, of your gross income. All right. Okay. However, if it's below that, there you can only go up to 35%. So that 4% can make a, a significant difference in um, how much house you can, um, you know, you can right. afford as well. Yeah. So hence why if I can work with you to get your score up, it will benefit you all, all around. Um, 
what you find though is that once you start to um your score starts to go below 600 um that's when you have to look at a b lender at that point and b lenders the interest rates go up then right. so and uh the other thing with that too is that your down payment starts to differ there too so it's it's usually 20 percent or more that right. you have to put down so I, I encourage anybody where you know your score is below um 600 let's work on that score so it puts you in a better position so that you can afford more and you get a better interest rate at that point okay so um, if somebody just comes here and say they've been here for six months um, and want to get their credit score, how do they do that? Um, there are ways to do it. So there are a couple of different um, apps that you can download um, so that you can run your credit score. But to be able to do that, of course, you have to be banking somewhere. OK, because okay. some banks, they will offer to to be able to run your credit score and you can see it from there. How the credit score is, is, is um, you know, put together is Equifax is there or TransUnion is there, but everything is feeding into them so that they know how you're doing on, on your credit. Right. But, you know, the banks are feeding into them. So once you have a bank account established and everything, um, you see if you'll be able to establish your, your credit, uh, your credit score that way. Um, Equifax actually has a, a free um access to your credit score um or you can check if, once a year um it used to be once a year you can check it every week now oh wow okay yeah that's, that's yeah so <laughs> yes so i'll share you that uh, that link as well later um that you can add in um it's it's really really good i normally use it with my uh, clients so that they can check their score before i check it because if they check it it's a soft check if i check it it's a hard check Right. So, so it's, it's, it's better if they check it first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what's the difference between a soft check and a hard check? And then um, after that, I'll get you to um, just tell us how people can get a hold of you. And of course, I know you're going to send me some links. Yes, uh, absolutely. So uh, a soft check is, is where it doesn't impact your credit score. Um, it's just where you are checking to see where you are at um, and, you know, your credit lines and if you're paid everything on time and, and how the world sees you as a, a, a you know a debtor at that, that point in time. Right. Once there is a company that wants to check on you and they want to see how you're doing, then it becomes a hard check. So you'd find if you're going to apply for a credit card, they're going to do a hard check. Um, okay. A car loan, a hard check. A mortgage, definitely a hard check. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, if we are to give, you know, a couple of steps, if, if I'm a newcomer and I'm going, you know what, I'm trying to get a house in Canada, what are kind of like uh, first steps they should do in the process? Absolutely. So one of the first things I would do is, you know, on your, when you're on your way to Canada, make sure that if you want to bring funds over to Canada, make sure that you have that organized. Um, I, I found that, you know, clients where they're trying to get money in while they're here, it's a little bit more difficult and cumbersome. Um, okay. You are allowed to bring money in. Absolutely. You just have to declare it. So so that's, that's something to, to keep in mind. So if anything, if you come with a lump sum of money, set up a TFSA or some sort of savings account that you can keep it in a money market account so you can keep it in there. So you can use it when it, when you're ready. So it's and it's just easier for the lender to see that the funds are there and yeah, right. be able to access. Yeah. Um, that, that will be one of my, my first steps because of what I've seen with, uh, with chatting with the uh, new, new to Canada. And then once you have that meet up with a mortgage broker so that we can help you figure out how much home you can afford. Uh, yeah. Once you have that, you can then meet a realtor and then you could uh, look for homes that you like. Um, also remember that you don't have to find your dream home at the start. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't always happen. Um, but just getting something so that you can start building equity is so important, uh, because you can then use that equity to then possibly find the next one or the next one, maybe your dream home at that point in time. Wise words. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, Trudy, we are coming to the end of this series. Um, I want to thank you for sharing your knowledge. 
And, you know, you and I are both, I guess we're both newcomers at one time. Uh, That's here. right. And so we understand the experience firsthand trying to um, find a feet and find our financial footing in the country while getting used to all the newness of everything, including shoveling snow. So um, I'll leave you with a couple of last words, but again, um, you're going to send me the links. I'm going to post that so people can see that. And uh, people will have an easy way to contact you if they have any other questions. I know yes. I've had quite a number of uh, new people come in to Halifax and they come to me and ask me things because I talk a lot about finance and it would be nice to say, go talk to Trudy. She's the expert in that. Okay. I appreciate that. Thanks so I'll that. give you uh, last words and then we'd, uh, we'll say bye and uh, we'll call it tonight. All right. Sounds good. So I guess what I want to share is that, um, as you rightly said, Emo, we all started there. We were all newcomers at some point in time. And it's it's not to become flustered, um, you know, and think, you know, this is this is something I'm is going to be difficult to do. Just make your way through, find the right information, check out videos like this, so that you know you can feel comfortable with getting the process done. Yeah. Um it I wish I had somebody like that when when I moved in. Um, and that's what moved me to be able to do this so that if there's anybody who is in my position, I know that I'm there to, to help them as well. Um, life in Canada has been fantastic for, for me and my family. And um, being able to, to come in here and get established and have a home, I know how is it is important it is, especially if you come from somewhere where you've had your home already. So to get reestablished is, is so important. So um, we're here to help. Absolutely. Um, and I know, Emo, your your forte is in, in, you know, helping on the financial side, too. So this is something that um, we want to encourage persons to just reach out and see how we can help them because we are absolutely willing to do it. So um, if I honestly, I don't have to be paid to do this. It's something that I love doing. But it's good to get paid on the side. Though. But yes. Well, this is true. Well, I always said that. Uh, this is not work because we like it. I mean, like I said, this yes. is it's almost uh, 10 o'clock now. We're still at this and we all had full work days. Yes, we love this. And so it's not work. And we do it because uh, it's the kind of thing we, we wish someone had done for us. And That's people right. actually did some of some of those things for us anyway. It might have been a little bit more scattered and now we can bring it in uh, together. Where someone could just go to one place and yes. get all the answers. Right. Trudy, thank you very much. I am sure we're going to do more episodes together. And uh, I'm going to pick your brain for um, more things as people ask me questions. And Absolutely. when I know it comes into your expertise, I'll, uh, I'll bring you in to talk about that. Thank so you. Have yourself a fine evening and uh, we'll talk again soon. Talk again soon. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.